Hi, I'm Chuck Marundi, broker of Squim in Port Angeles Real Estate. Now, let me talk to you about what happened this morning. I attended a trustee sale at the Clellam County Courthouse this morning on behalf of a client who was interested in a particular property. The gentleman who handled the sales had 14 properties on the uh, foreclosure docket this morning. Of the 14, several uh, were continued, uh, at least one was canceled, and uh, several were uh, auctioned off, but there were only four people there beside myself, and they weren't necessarily there to buy a particular property, they were just kind of observing. There were no bidders for any of the properties this morning. Now, that's not unusual here. In October, there were at least 67 properties uh, auctioned at the uh, trustee sales in Clallam County. In November, there were 47 that were foreclosed and sold. Now, in the last 18 months in Clallam County, there were only three bidders on all of the properties that were auctioned off at the trustee sale. That's very interesting, but it's not hard to understand when you look behind the scenes and see what's going on. Number one, the properties that are being sold are often almost always upside down. So more is owed on these properties to the banks or the financial institutions than their current fair market value. Therefore, nobody wants to bid. What's happening at the trustee sales is the gentleman handling the, uh, the sales is instructed to, uh, to announce that the minimum bid is the total amount that is owed to the bank plus costs and accrued interest. Well, that total amount is more than the properties are worth. So nobody's bidding. Not a surprise here. And that's, uh, that's true almost all the way across the board on all the properties. Now, it gets more interesting. If you as a buyer find a property that you would like to buy, if you're not going to buy it with a cashier's check at the trustee sale, and you do have to have a cashier's check to do that, you can't say, I want to buy this house, now uh, I'll pay the full price and then go to my bank and get a loan. No, you have to have a cashier's check for the full amount. That certainly discourages a lot of people. In fact, that eliminates about 99% of all potential buyers because who has cash? Now. If you see a property you like and it is, nobody bids on it because it's not worth the fair market value, then what happens at the trustee sale is it's taken back by the bank. Now here's where the bureaucracy uh, and the chaos really creates kind of a uh, almost a guarantee that the properties aren't going to be sold for a long time and that you as a buyer cannot buy one of these properties for a long time. I'm telling the truth. Listen to this process. First, the, uh, the gentleman who handles the trustee sales will finish up his paperwork and send it in to the uh, organization or the company that handles the trustee sales, which of course is not the bank. That company then uh, coordinates the recording of a trustee's deed in the county, which usually will take a period of uh, a couple of months to get that thing drafted, recorded, and proof of the recording. So, it's going to be a couple of months after the sale before the property is, is then ready for the next phase. Now the next phase you might think is to get this property on the market and get it sold. Oh no, 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 we're a long way from that. The next phase is that the bank has companies called REOs. These are third party entities that uh, handle the listing and the management of the real estate after it's foreclosed for the bank. And uh, so these independent organizations then are hired by the bank. Now, these independent organizations, these REOs, then go out and they hire realtors to list the property and put it in the MLS. Now at this point, 
there's a whole other layer of organizations out there that must enter the picture. There are dozens and dozens of companies that do nothing but handle the database of realtors who are qualified to handle the foreclosure sales. Now when I say qualified, I don't mean necessarily by uh, experience or uh, knowledge or any other certifications. I mean that they've got to go through an application process with these other organizations, these private companies, uh, provide um, a detailed uh, application, proof of errors and omissions insurance, and once they do that, they might, just might be accepted by one of those organizations as qualified to handle foreclosure listings for the banks. A realtor who wants to handle these foreclosure listings has to go through this application process with dozens and dozens of these other entities, these other private companies. Now these private companies then work with the REOs who represent the banks that foreclosed. Okay, let's track how this works then. Let's say that a property has officially been foreclosed at a trustee sale and the bank is taking it back. Then within a couple of months, the trustee's deed is recorded, an REO is contacted, and the REO then looks for a realtor to list the property and also for a couple of contractors who will manage or maintain that property during the term of the listing. A realtor who has gone through that application process may then become the listing agent. An agent doesn't get listings right away even though he may go through that whole application process. First, he has to grovel. Let me explain what I mean by that. The banks need appraisals. They need comps, informal appraisals done by realtors on properties before they're foreclosed. So they'll ask uh, realtors who have gone through this application process to give them an estimate of value of a property. So a realtor is going to go out and spend a lot of time doing comps. Next phase, get this, you're going to be fascinated with this. This whole thing should be uh, some sort of comedy for Saturday Night Live. It's hard to believe that this is reality, but as they say, truth is stranger than fiction. So what happens next? Let's assume that property has been foreclosed, the deed has been recorded, the REO has been contacted and hired. They have then listed the property with a real estate agent. They have also uh, hired a local contractor to maintain the yard or the premises during the term of the listing. The realtor has put the house in the MLS and he's had to go through uh, quite a process for the REO because they want monthly written detailed reports on the status of the property and lots of other paperwork that just drives realtors crazy and serves no real purpose. But once that home is in the MLS, now uh, other agents and buyers can begin to, to find it and make an offer on it. Now notice that the timeline here is really amazing. First, the house goes into default. The homeowner is no longer able or willing to make the mortgage payment. Then, three months after that, the bank commences a foreclosure. At a minimum of 190 days from the date of default to the trustee sale, the house is then sold. Normally, nothing uh, in this market, especially this chaotic market, goes that smoothly. So you're talking about probably from the, t from the date of default to probably more like eight or ten months or even a year before a foreclosure actually is completed. The house may have been abandoned and empty all of that time losing value and no one has been able to buy it during that term, right? 